Hello, welcome to Bike Social, welcome to southern Portugal. Here we are at Portimao, the circuit here in the Algarve, and it's very much like Cadwell Park on steroids. It is amazing to ride. If you've never ridden here, I promise you you should get here. Anyway, I'm here to ride two uh, updated, heavily updated Hondas for 2024, both of which are very much track derived. Uh, on my left, we have the CBR1000RR-RSP, AKA the Fireblade. Uh, here on my right, we've got the CBR600RR making a reappearance, uh, last seen on UK shores or in UK dealers as a new bike back in 2017. So the heavily revised 600 version is priced at about just under 10 and a half thousand pounds, 10,495 to be precise. Whereas the Fireblade, 23 and a half thousand pounds. It's more than twice what the 600 is. Fine, they're two totally different bikes, but they both have track orientation at their heart and at their soul. So if you're looking for a bike that can do the business on the road and look fantastic, but you can take it to a track day as well and, and, and have a brilliant time, then is one really twice as good as the other? Can one break twice as well as the other? Does one handle twice as well as the other? I think we're gonna have a day here and try and find out. So the current generation of the Fireblade came out in 2020, just as the world went into lockdown and it was heavily, heavily revitalized from the previous generation, 2017, I think that was. And it, it was uh, the expectations for the bike, certainly on the racing scene in the, in the British uh, Championships, in the European Championships, in the World Championships, the expectations were very, very high. It didn't really meet those expectations. It won races here and there. It was a regular podium finisher in that first season. And so the bike was updated in 2022. And again, didn't really reach the, the heights that it was supposed to. Dominated this British uh, Superstock series um, last year, that's 2023, but never reached the highest, highest heights of the Superbike class. That's gonna change this year. Well, we think so, judging on the sort of the, the reactions of some of the team uh, that have been around us already this morning. But yeah, we're going to try this, um, both of them on track. The Ray is not really playing ball at the moment. We've got some wet tyres in. We've got some slick tyres ready just in case, fingers crossed. We're going to have a couple of sessions on the 600 first of all, uh, and then a couple of sessions on the Fireblade later on. That's going to give us nowhere near enough time, certainly on the Fireblade, to go through all of its nuances. There's so much detail uh, to do with the electronics particularly. There's no way we're going to be able to test all of those parameters, certainly with the engine braking, certainly with all of the new suspension setups. However, what I'm going to do for you in this video is certainly talk about uh, in greater detail what is new on the 600, what is new on the Fireblade. Um, and then we're going to talk to a pair from Olin's uh, because this has got the brand new Olin's uh, EC 3.0 setup on it, which is very cool. Uh, we're also going to talk to Javier Beltran, uh, who's the team manager from Honda UK Racing, who's got an impressive lineup. He's bitten off uh, quite a lot, really, with the 600 and with the Fireblade, with British Super Sport, with British Superbike, with the road sections at the uh, Northwest and the TT as well. He's got a big and rather impressive rider lineup, including, of course, the reigning Bennett's British Superbike champion, Tommy Bridewell, who brings the number one plate to the Honda camp. Uh, well, let's see if both bikes can serve their riders um, on the track with what we can expect and what we can see today here at Portimao. So on the 600, we've got new engine suspension, brakes, uh, chassis, uh, setups, they're not new, all those components are not new, but there's new parts to them. Uh, electronics, it's kind of taken over here. Um, there's a new 6 axis, axis IMU, which is important. It's got the winglets, which are, are not going to do a great deal, I'm, I'm sure of that, but they, they make the bike stand out as a 2024 model because, of course, on, on, as a silhouette, it still looks very much like the old 600 that we're used to. Um, primarily, the reason why it didn't continue after 2017 was uh, European emission regulations. So when Euro 4 came about, Honda went, well, we're not selling enough, so we're not going to bother uh, putting the R&D into it. There's been a resurgence in the class. Uh, Euro 5 Plus is now where we're at, and this meets those standards. So hooray, because the 600's back, and I cannot wait to have a go on it. And then with the Fireblade, again, engine, frame, brake, suspension have all been upgraded. They've all, the engine especially, uh, I'll get onto the twin throttle bodies thing in just a minute when we go through all the technical detail, but that is gonna be really key, I'm certain of that, in the way it makes the power, the way it delivers the power, and in the way actually it, you, you can use the engine braking to your advantage too. It's gonna to sound mega, I've already heard it earlier on today. 
It sounds wonderful. Anyway, let's get into the tech detail and then we're gonna try it on track. All right, let's look at the spec of both bikes, starting with the 600. So 10 and a half thousand pounds will get you the choice of two colors. You've either got this, that's the traditional HRC, you know, red, white, and blue, or they do a stealthy black version too, which is rather cool. The 600cc inline four reaches a peak power of 119.3 brake horsepower. That's at 14,250 RPM. And it's max torque figure, 46 and a half foot pounds at 11 and a half thousand RPM. Bore and stroke, as well as the compression ratio, is the same as before, but the throttle bodies are increased by about 10%. The inlet ports have been reshaped, while uh, new cam timing improves efficiency and the exhaust and the catalyst have been redesigned, of course, because it needs to meet Euro 5 plus emission regulations. And in fact, they told us in the press conference that 50 prototypes were tested. 50. Assisting slipper clutch is new, managed by the uh, electronic setup derived by, from the Fireblade actually. And then that was inspired by the RC213VS. Blimey, that's about 10 years old now already. Uh, that's, so uh, what has it got? It's got nine levels of traction control, five riding modes, um, three standard, and then two can be user defined, they call it. Five power levels. There's cornering ABS, there's engine brake control, there's rear lift control, there's wheelie control. It's got three levels of intervention. Um, and all of that is governed by a new 6X axis IMU, uh, and which again is the same one from the Firebase. There's an up and down quick shifter fitted. Um, that's very, very cool. I can't wait to have a go at that. So while it might look the same and have a very similar engine, you could say the level of tech here is in line with the current crop of superbikes. Uh, in terms of handling, suspension, weight, brakes, the chassis, like the engine, can be dated back to about 07. Um, it's got that familiar looking die cast aluminium twin spar frame and swing arm. The wheelbase is the same as the last version, though the new setup means the rake and trail are fractionally altered. Chassis tweaks continue. We've got a slightly revised swing arm, it's a fraction lighter. The suspension. Uh, so that's 41mm Showa SFFBP upside down forks. They're 15mm longer than before, and that is to allow for sort of bigger setup adjustments and fully adjustable damping. Uh, the rear shock, that's also fully adjustable and made by Showa. Um, electronic steering damper controlled by the ECU. So radial Tokiko four pop brakes on 310mm discs at the front, and it's got the 220mm version with a single piston caliper at the back. Weight, 193 kilos, that's wet, so that includes fuel. These aerodynamic winglets, they are said to aid stability, and I'm quoting here, after the brakes have been released. Um, speaking of fairing tweaks, the lower fairing now runs all the way to the back to make it look a bit smarter and to hit with aero, I'm sure. Uh, claimed economy, get this, it's north of 50 mpg. So you should be able to get 200 miles out of this 18 liter tank. So, oh well, equipment wise on board, there's the color TFT dash. That includes access to all of those IMU assisted traction control and riding modes. Uh, you can set the display in three different modes, street, circuit, or mechanic. There's a gear shift indicator. Um, the dash even shows you lap times or number of laps completed or fastest lap readouts. Of course, all of that will be very handy when you're on your way to Tesco's. It's got full LED lighting. It's got that emergency stop warning thing that flashes the hazards under heavy braking, which is a royal pain for people following you on a track day. Oh, optional accessory packs. Yes, there's a racing pack at 270 pounds. That's got the carbon look tank pad, uh, pillion seat cover, wheel stripes, and the HRC oil filler cap. Mm -hmm. um, comfort pack, it's a bit more pricey at 460. They've got, uh, that comes with a tail pack. Um, five level heated grips and a USB-C stock socket. Moving over to its stable mate, the Fireblade. So the Blade's 1000cc inline four is based on last year's model and makes the same peak power and torque. So it's 214 and a bit brake horsepower, 83 and a bit foot pounds. Um, but they, they arrive at different revs. So that hints, of course, some of those changes within the engine. Uh, max power comes in at 500 RPM less at 14,000 and peak torque uh, also 500 RPM less at 12,000. What it does show 
is that the engine delivers more performance without needing quite as many revs. So, in race form, that's likely to translate to more rideability, improved mid-range delivery and, and higher peak power. Those internal changes are pretty extensive, so bore and stroke are unaltered, but compression ratio is increased. The inlet valves are lighter than last year's, so add both the intake and the exhaust camshafts are reprofiled. There's new valve springs, crankshaft pin, titanium con rods, even the engine block itself is tweaked, so there's about a quarter of a kilo shaved off that. So, well, that's, that's off the, um, the, the crankcase. So the total weight saving of the engine is like half a kilo. Those mechanical updates are matched by electronic updates too. Most notably, and this is important, the throttle by wire system is new. So they've got two motors controlling the butterflies uh, in the cylinders rather than one. So you've got one motor that acts on cylinders one and two and the other on three and four, and they are individually controlled. So that maxes response, it gives finer throttle adjustments, and uh, in small throttle openings, cylinders one and two, uh, the throttles are open first, and then three and four, just gives them more control, refined control. Under deceleration, the same system allows the level of engine braking to be modulated, uh, leaving the throttles for cylinders three and four open for air only, no fuel, while those for cylinders one and two close. Get it? Anyway. I am looking forward to seeing if we can turn on track, uh, especially under braking into turn one, which if you don't know Portimao, you approach it about 180 miles an hour, flat in sixth. Anyway, moving on, so as before, masses of rider aids, including nine traction control settings, five power modes, three engine braking uh, levels, three wheelie control settings. Uh, all of them have been refined for this model, the 2024 model. There's also launch control, uh, it's got various settings and three-level quick shifter. Chassis handling, suspensions, heavy improvements made there to boost the bike's racing prospect. You can't see the changes, but the wall thickness of the um, frame, of the aluminium beam frame, have been tweaked. And, and that cuts nearly a kilo from the chassis weight and helps rigidity. The Fireblade has long used these Olin's uh, NPX Smart EC forks, but the latest version has this new EC 3.0, so it's a third gen version from Olin's. It is the first production bike to do so. Uh, and they're matched by the uh, TTX 36S EC 3.0 rear shock. And we'll find out more about the Olin stuff later on when we talk to the man from Olin's. Brakes are new. Um, we've got the Brembo Stylimer R, four pot calipers at the front. Uh, they are controlled by that Bosch six axis IMU. It gives cornering ABS, traction control, it even modulates the settings of the uh, Showa electronic steering damper. Corners, the new front winglets also promise improvements to the steering without compromising downforce. Um, this is a bit of a telltale sign of the 2024 model and how they appear. So they sit on reshaped fairing side panels. Um, there's the new lower fairing that improves airflow on the rear tyre. The fuel tank's new, it's bigger by half, just under half a litre. Uh, so it takes the uh, capacity up to 16 and a half litres. It's got a lower top surface to get it tucked in a bit and the sides are reshaped to help uh, knee grip, all of which I'm sure will be very, very important. Uh, the rest of the riding position is tweaked as well. The bars themselves are now 19 mil higher. Uh, they're also a little bit closer to the rider and the foot pegs are lower. Um, so in theory, it should be a little bit more comfortable than the previous gen. Seat height's the same though, it's 830. Yeah, it should get about 150 miles. They claim 42 mpg. The full color TFT displays carried over from the previous gen. Uh, five inch screen, yeah, uh, customizable display. Ah, one slight tweak for 2024 is the uh, introduction of this smart red line for the readout. Uh, so when the bike's cold, it puts the red line at just 8,000 RPM. And as the coolant temperature rises, max revs increase. Uh, obviously you can get them all the way to 14,000 RPM. So. It's a bit fancy. Optional kit, uh, you've got the track only HRC kit, of course, with dedicated ECU, wiring harness, race exhaust. Uh, they even do a quick release um, rear axle as well. Uh, again, mega handy. There's a comfort pack, there's a racing pack, uh, as with the 600, so you've got things like tank bag, tail bag, USB socket, or there's the, the pinion seat cowl, there's a tank pad, frame guards, Alcantara seat. Anyway, let us stop and move on. We must go and try them on the track. Here we go, pit lane, exit on the fire blade. Right, you're not going to be able to hear a lot of this, I promise you already, because it's going to get windy. There's not a massive amount of uh, body work, just like the previous gen. So you can't
to get wholly tucked in. However, I've had one session on this already, and it is a corker! So many changes. Unbelievable. I'm well, not a completely different animal, but goodness me, it's good. It's got so much more meat range. It makes the bike so much more usable in the lower RPM. The gear ratios have changed for the better significantly. The home straight, the start finish straight. So it means you don't have to be as harsh on the brakes. Very clever. What a thrill. I tell you what, if you don't ride a motorbike, you damn well ought to. Alright, you don't often get to take a 214 horsepower 2024 fire blade around Portimao. But if you ever get the chance, oh. Okay, I found Pear from Olin's. He's going to talk to me now about the new EC3 system. So, the Fireblade is the first bike we've seen it on, correct? Yeah, correct. Honda is the first uh, production bike with the Smart EC system, which basically, yeah, you have some uh, updated algorithms uh, with, uh, yeah, more advanced event identification, so we can uh, identify more situations. And uh, we also have uh, a new faster actuator with a bigger adjustment range. So, yeah, more fluent on the track and also a little bit more stability, but still more comfortable on, on the road if you go in a uh, comfort setting. Yeah, sure. So these are the big differences between the 2 and the 3, 2.0, 3.0. Yeah. Okay, so and, and how does it translate then to, the di what are the differences between road and, 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 and the track settings? Uh, basically, it's in terms of damping levels. So for the track, you need a lot more damping and stability. But you have different riding modes, so if you put it in the rain setting, then uh, a lot less damping and more comfortable on the road. Okay. Do you, can you demonstrate them with this? If I come one side and you go the other side, and sure. then we can maybe have a look at, uh, at what some of the, that actually means. Yeah. So if you look down here, you have uh, now it's in the A1, the track mode, mm -hmm. but then you can change it to sport or rain. And rain is like the comfort setting okay. for the road. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you're using just the, the buttons on the left hand side of the bar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And this is semi-active, isn't it? I can tell because of the exactly. So well, for leads, yeah. So we have uh, separate compression and rebound damping uh, with uh, yeah one actuator in each fork and also two actuators for uh, yeah the shock absorber. And tell me a little bit more about what um, what are the parameters here? What can I change? So if I'm if I'm going to take this bike now on the road and I want it to be comfortable because well certainly where I live is lots of potholes and it's uh, the roads are very bad condition. Yep. What would you what sort of what would you recommend I did? I recommend you put in the rain mode. Uh, but also one new feature for for this model is that you can also have it automatically adjust for your weight in terms of damping. So if you go into uh, I like this idea. The is it going to tell me I need to stop eating cake? <laughs> Only indirectly. <laughs> <laughs> is when you catch, you reach the maximum, it doesn't go anymore. Yeah, maybe. But so then you go into this uh, preload guide, uh, and you can actually in here enter oh, your uh, ninety, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's at seventy-five, which is the level that we have tuned with with the Honda riders. Okay. But if you then go up to ninety. Then the, the okay. damping level will be optimized for that weight. Will that do it? It won't do it ele electronically. Uh, in terms of the damping, yes. Oh. But then you also get preload. suggestions for the preload. Front so, and rear. Yeah, exactly. Ah, so, so this is recommendations. The recommendations, yes. And these needs to be done manually. Uh, exactly. Ah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you can see that yeah, this is two and a half turns for the front fork, and also for the rear. Uh, Oh, and you have your yeah, tools. Hydraulic reload yeah. adjuster. So let me come around and have a look and see what that happens. Yeah. Then. <laughs> Manual, but fairly easy. So standard is uh, seven turns, and now we want to increase by two and a half turns. So, yeah, one, two, two and a half, like oh, that. Yeah. And how, what will that mean to me on the bike? Yeah, so, yeah, the, basically it, then it will be stay a little bit higher in the stroke, yeah. in the rear. And it's the correct sag for that weight. 
and if you go on the road then it basically mostly means that you have more stroke so that it doesn't bottom out for potholes and so on but if you go on the track then it's also very important for yeah your riding position so how easy the bike is to turn and like so that. if I'm, I'm just going to do it in front of the camera with my hand here. So if I'm sitting, the bike is like this, then I sit on the bike, it, it tips automatically. And then as soon as I accelerate, it tips a little bit further back, correct? Yeah. Okay. So this is sort of taking the adjustments out of my weight because you put 90 kilos in and it makes the adjustments. So yeah. therefore, if I'm coming onto the straight where there is a, a lift and I'm flat out, it's not going to be as, it's not going to be as light at the front. It's not going to, it's not going to sort of you know, tank slap for a better expression, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You have more weight on the front. And also when you go into a corner, if the bike is more pitched forward, then it gets easier to turn. So it's more agile. Fascinating. Brilliant. Per, thank you so much for your time. Well, we've bumped into Javier Beltran, who is the team manager of Honda Racing UK. Half, thanks for joining me. Now, last night in the hotel when we arrived, you were beaming from ear to ear. And I know you've been, you've been privy to these bikes for several months now, but you were sort of desperate for us to get on there uh, and give them a spin. And um, I, look now, I now look back and I kind of understand why that beam was so, smart, uh, it was so wide, because they're extraordinary bikes. But uh, tell me, how uh, you must be absolutely buzzing wait for the season ahead with the 600, with the Fireblade, with the team lineup that you've got as well, the rider lineup. For sure, Michael, like I said, you know, the, the Fireblade, it doesn't look so radically different. But on track, um, what they've done is incredible. And as you said, you know, the, the, the impact today from everybody getting on and off the bike has been phenomenal. Um, and, you know, to, to have the CBR 600 back with us and amongst the family again, again, that's a, a lovely bike to ride. Um, the potential this has is, is phenomenal. Um, and who other than, you know, Jack Kennedy, four times pretty super Bowl champion to help us move this along in that way. You've bitten, up, bitten off quite a, a, a hefty chunk there, haven't you? You've got the 600 to run in British Super Sport. Yes. I started now, so I've got to finish. Yeah, yeah. You've got, <laughs> in the Venice pretty super bike championship, you've got the super stock and the super bikes to run. Super bike. Not the super stocks this no. year? No, not super stocks. You're we'll not be supporting, supporting riders got you. in super stock, uh -huh. but not running our own team. Got you. Oh, well, that's one less thing for you to do. Yep. Isn't it? You yep. have a lie in. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, the, the roads with the Northwest and the TT. How on earth do you do it all? However, you fit the time in. It's been a challenge. It is, it's, been, it's been very, very hard. Difficult off-season, difficult preparation and everything. But I think, you know, from the, the probably difficulties that we've had over the last couple of years, we needed to make something right and put something together in a way. Um, hence the team format that I presented to Honda UK. And, you know, I believe that this year with the machinery and with the riders and the team we have, you say, with Nathan, Dean, John on the roads, Jack, Dean, Andrew, Tommy and BSB. Um, got quite a few bases covered and now we just need to deliver the results. Um, and, you know, from 2024, look at the machinery we've got. It's a, a great start. The riders must have been... Uh, we've, I've heard John McGuinness uh, earlier on talking about how he's never been so excited to get off a race bike or a road bike. Uh, and you know, with the vision of it becoming this race bike that he can, he can take to the TT in the Northwest and... He was, he was beaming as well. Everyone's been in a better mood than the weather. Yes, it, 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 you know, words are beyond me at the moment because like I said, from visually, the bike doesn't look so different. But underneath the bodywork, there are a lot of changes and it's transformed what we've had into something that we believe now as a road bike from road to track is probably the best firebreak that Honda put together. Uh, there's so many firsts on there for Honda this year. Um, the split throttle try by wire mm. is an incredible setup. Um, and you've experienced that on track here. But if you, if you can imagine that on the roads and that in Superstock, um, we're going to have a, you know, some great machinery out there. That's a hell of a lot smoother and it's, a, it's an incredible piece of kit. Mm. Harp, thanks for your time. Uh, no I wish problem. the best of luck for the season ahead. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.
a rather epic day here at Portimao and it's uh, my mood has been certainly a lot better than the weather's. Uh, we've had a bit of a topsy-turvy day with little consistency. However, two sessions this morning on the 600 with the full wets, and two sessions this afternoon on the Fireblade, um, and we even got to try the, the Pirelli slicks out as well. Uh, I, I, what Honda have done here with the Fireblade especially is revolutionary. It's, uh, it's a cut above and for a bike that looks very, very similar to the outgoing model or the previous, the, the previous version, um, what they've done electronically, specifically with those throttle bodies, those twin throttle bodies and the way in which the suspension works, I witnessed it uh, very evidently on the track. Um, they, we changed the suspension settings between the first and the second session of the Fireblade and it, it worked without compromise. It allowed me to a lot faster uh, by, by having a much more settled front end. It sounds a bit dramatic, but it, it really was a big, big difference. And the way in which it produces the power and you can get on the gas and you can really drive. I, mean, I had a, a, fair, a fair few sessions out with the previous version, which, um, which had all that lot longer gear ratio, especially first gear. This is a lot more manageable. It's a lot easier to ride, believe it or not. And I think a lot of that's down to the electronics. They are very, very clever. It is like a rocket propelled supercomputer, if you will. Um, and it will flatter any rider. I know my, my level is nowhere near some of those who we were riding with today on track. Uh, other journalists, let alone the likes of Dean Harris and John McGuinness and Tommy Bridewell. But I was still able to feel like a superhero. And I think that's a great thing. So 23 and a half thousand pounds versus your 10 and a half thousand pounds over here with the 600. Very, very different bikes. Um, despite saying that, this has got its own electronic raft, uh, which, which again, complement you as a rider much much again it looks very similar to the to the old bike from 2017 but really underneath the hood when you think about those changes to the engine and, and electronics you do this a lot it's very very nice um there's that little lag just in that mid-range sort of six to seven irrelevant if you're a road rider and you're only going to use it on a road um so i'm just trying to pick faults really or to, to, to at least demonstrate some kind of negativity in a way the wings don't do anything uh, to, for what I could feel. Uh, they look the part, they look nice. It's like a prerequisite that you need wing, wings these days. It's a very comfortable motorbike as well. Slightly different riding position to the Fireblade. Actually, it's, one, it's a good point because the, the, the Fireblade's had a very a few minor adjustments with its riding position. It, it, it makes it actually a little bit more comfortable. Obviously, we're not ridden on the roads. Um, it would be nice to when we get it back in the UK and we can try it on the road just to see what it is like as a road bike. I can't quite believe that it is a road bike, you know, with the amount of power that it has. Very, very controllable. Very, very easy to use as well and to apply. And the thing is absolutely wild. It's so quick, but in a controlled way. And, and it's still an inline four, and yet it's got so much character. The sound, uh, with the changes that they've made internally with the engine and with the exhaust, it sounds beautiful. It sounds so good and aggressive and growly through the acceleration, but also on the deceleration. It's magical. And you know, when the likes of John McGuinness, okay, gets paid by Honda, where's the Honda badge? And he comes in and he's beaming, he's smiling. He's so happy to get off a bike, which he thinks clearly is gonna do a very, very good job at what he needs to do on a racetrack or at the TT. But then when the likes of we get in and pull our helmets off and are just, no, exhausted because you, the physicality of, a, of trying to control a bike like this would ordinarily you'd think it'd be, it'd be quite mad but it got to the end of the session a 20 minute track session around the likes of this circuit which is physically tricky with all its undulations and with the amount of power that this has got you normally get to the end of the session you think oh thank goodness i get to come in and breathe a bit not on this i'm gonna carry on it was so good i, I, I know we know that it's not going to sell by the bucket load. You know, back in 99, 2000, there's about three and a half, four thousand of these sold. It won't get above a thousand this year. And just with the state of the market and, and the way in which people use their motorbikes. So, you know, I understand that it's not going to sell loads, but I think it's a fabulous motorbike. And I think it's going to do a terrific job in the racing classes uh, at Superstock and Superbike at, at, at the Venice, Venice British Superbike Championship and also on the roads. The 600, great to have it back. Really, really great bike to ride. Very, very easy. Um, sounds mega, very comfortable. 
nice to kind of reminisce in a way, and I think it'll be, it'll, it, I think it will sell more than the Fireblade. Ten and a half grand, twenty and a half grand. It's very, very difficult to judge them in the same in the same way because I don't think that they're, they're they're speaking to the same customer. So you know what we said at the beginning, would you choose one over the other just because of the price difference or the or the power difference? You, you can't choose you can't choose between them, but they're both very, 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 very good bikes in their own right. So. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with it. Uh, if you want to know some more detail about the bike, go to bikesocial.co.uk. I'll have a full written review for you. Uh, don't forget to get yourself a Bike Social membership, which is free if you're a, bike, if you're a Bennett's Insurance customer. Um, the Facebook group, Bennett's Bike Social Facebook group, come and join us there. Again, it's a private group. Really, there's four and a half, five thousand people there already. We'll have a good chat, good banter, try to help you out as best we can. Um, there, I think that's all my corporate messages done. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, of course, for all the YouTube goodness. Uh, comment below. Any questions, let me know. See you next time.